So just to acknowledge a few things that have gone down lately. Yes, we encountered Zavid, who was a party member in Zestiria. Yes, we have Aizen in our party, who is a straight-up dragon in Zestiria. And yes, we just went to the place that in Zestiria was called Artorius's Throne, the final level of the game. There's connections. More connections than I ever expected, honestly. I, was, I thought they were just going to use that as an excuse to use the same uh, world mechanics or something, but we're uh, direct, having a lot of direct prequel stuff going on, so I'm now I'm really wondering whether or not Edna makes an appearance in this game. Is there anything here besides the portal over there? Wow. Eternity just kind of goes, doesn't it? Huh. See, in this visual a lot, actually. A big open plane of fantastic, crazy energy landscape with a lot of vertical pillars of, of energy going through it. Or even sometimes not energy, but sometimes just physical rock beams in some ga games' cases. Always takes me back to Bloodborne a little bit. Even if it's not- it's obviously not the progenitor. Just hang in there, Luffy said. I might just want to go straight for portals. Yeah, this place doesn't seem to have anything in it besides the, uh, the exit, basically. She's adapting to this new setting pretty easily. Oh yeah, just, just portals. It's fine. Use these every day. It's my commute, this is my commute to work. The exit should be around here somewhere. Why? Based on what? Have you been here before? I mean, what if you're stuck here forever now? That's, an, that's a hell of an assumption to make. Oh yeah, definitely. Totally an exit. Of course there'd be. There can never be an untold hellscape in another world where you're just trapped there forever when the moment you go there. Maybe she's just holding out a hope. Although optimism seems out of, out of character for her. Though there, there is that one sense of, my story can't end here, there has to be a way out. Crap. Which way do we go now? The alternative is impossible. So this one's labeled as an exit. So that makes me wonder if I should try this other path over here. It has the icon that indicates exit, and that over here there's another portal. And so maybe that is the one portal that does lead to like some kind of weird stashed item somewhere. And hopefully not like a dead end. Wrong way. No. Oh. It's one of the dead ends we could see in the distance on the map when we were on our way here. Weird. Weird, you have to go so far out of your way to go there, as opposed to the very obvious exit that I, I was sure they would stash something there. Guess not. Oh. No, we're still... We're still here. Thought that was the exit. Am I looping now? That moment when you can't tell if a game's looping or if it's anyway? just repeating environments. <laughs> I can't tell if I'm looping in place or if it's just the, the platforms look so similar. No, there's a star down there. That, that's new. We've done it! Where's the exit? What the hell is this place? It's an Earth Pulse. So you survived. Let's not count our blessings just yet. It looks like we've been sealed inside. But at least we're still alive. Can't say the same would be true if we stayed in that place. The Earth Pulse. So that's what this is. Yeah. It's like a river flowing with nature's life energy. Earth pulses can be found all over the world, but normally you can't see or interact with them. Then how'd we wind up inside one? When Inominat and Lafayette's power collided, the shock must have torn it open. 
If that's the case, it's possible that Lafayette possesses the power to return us home. But... Uh... He can't do much in this state. He's liable to turn into a demon any moment now. Don't talk like that. Is this because he overused his powers? It's not too late to stop it. If a Moloch occupies a pure vessel, he can be prevented from transforming into a demon. Even you? This lucky coin is my vessel. There's a catch to this one, though. It can only serve as a vessel for someone with the Reaper's powers. Then that's no help at all. An exorcist would work. We offer our own bodies as vessels for Malachim, so that we can use them for the Abbey's purposes. I volunteer to serve as your Moloch's vessel. I see. So we just need your body with us, not your legs. Not one step closer! I'll kill myself before you lay a hand on me. The Moloch will become a demon, and you'll be stuck here forever! You don't mince words, do you? Know your foes and strike where they're weak. The basis of all combat. As cowardly as I'd expect from a disciple of Artorius. No, this is personal. Once I regain my exorcist powers, I vow to challenge you, Demon Velvet! If I lose, I'll do whatever you wish. If you want me to die or to become a vessel, so be it. <laughs> uh, uh, Velvet, don't die. Fine. What's the Moloch's name? Normally, it is decided by their masters, but since I do not own him yet, I need to know. He's not a thing to be owned. He's Lafayset. <laughs> Lafayset. I see. O oh, child of the Fountain of Creation, these vows we exchange, may our purpose, resplendent, help to purify this cursed world. Remember this true name I bestow unto you. How the hell did we end up here? What's going on? That little brat! He actually unsealed the Earth Pulse? What was that? Huh. Guess this is the end of the Velvet World Tour Revengeathon. What an anticlimax. Not that I really care either way. We don't know that she's dead. Dead or alive, she's done. No way she'd keep going after seeing how outmatched she is. Bet you ten gold that I'm right. Ten gold? You're on. What in the... Luffy said, what did that exorcist do? What happened to you? I see. So that exorcist woman pledged herself as Lafayette's vessel? Where did she head off to then? 
If you two wound up here, then odds are that exorcist has appeared somewhere nearby. Then we'll find her. Sheesh, are you never not worked up about something? I said I would save him, so I will. Besides, his power is just what I need. Don't you forget our little wager now, all right? My darling Ted Gold, murdered in his crib by a thug! So, uh, am I hearing this right? Get away from me. It seems that the, uh, the exorcist hopping in after us is literally the only thing that saved us, and that we would have been completely trapped, because seemingly only Lafayette said was able to get us back out of there. That's... that's a hell of a gamble. Or a hell of a chance occurrence, at least. So yeah, if she... if she hadn't come with us, we were just trapped in Earth Pulse, and that's it. Because the opening has to be made. That's... that's crazy. So, in... She better end up uh, joining us in the end, or otherwise it's gonna feel... She's gonna feel really silly if she uh, remains our enemy and ends up being killed by us or something, because uh, she enabled our continued success, ultimately, by not having us be trapped forever in, our, in the Earth Pulse. Whoops. She is, she is like consistently tripping up Artorius' plans and is kind of just a not, not a great member of the enemy team. So she might as, well, might as well just give up and compromise her ideals and join us, yeah! <laughs> I mean, I have to check all four, right? That one even had a chest in it. So here we go. Uh-huh. It's about what we'd expect. And a bottle, all right. Well, one of them seemed like it had something relatively major in it. The other one just had a basic consumable. It's peaceful here. I was gonna say who tends all the plants, but actually they're all... They're all in these troughs on the side that probably would, uh, transfer moisture in a systematic sort of way. And there's sunbeams around here, not a lot, but it's something. Maybe, conceivably, stuff could grow down here. Bye. Oh. No. Those guys are back. I remember you from Zestiria. Oh no, a dead end! And so the adventure came to a close in a most sudden and unsatisfying manner! Look, that wall is cracked. That means... Hit it. There we go. Dead end walls. I'm just gonna not even try to read that. Surprise, you can break things still, just like you did before. I don't know if it's necessary to tell me a tutorial, especially... Uh, the, what confuses me about the tutorials... Like, one thing, it's an obvious crack thing, so hit it, like all the other crack things. That's simple. No, no need to tutorialize that. But then, they make you do it, and then they tell you a tutorial on it after you've already done it. That's even more pointless of a tutorial. I've already performed the action, I know now. A tutorial would be good for catching... So exorcists are actually the vessels for their Malachim. You can do that too, can't you, Mogulu? Of course! This fair maiden has won the Malachim's Choice Award, Most Desirable Vessel, three years running! Oh? Then you wouldn't mind replacing Eleanor as Lafisette's vessel, I hope. Thanks, but no thanks. I have my hands full dealing with Bienfu as it is. If I ate Bienfu, you'd have room. Bien! Still wouldn't work, kiddo. You saw it with your own eyes. Even if only for an instant, that kid actually held his own against the power of Inominat. Not even the resplendent Mogilu can handle something of that power. Indeed. After everything we've seen, it's obvious there's more to Lafayette than meets the eye. Yeah. But that Eleanor woman was still able to become his vessel. That's because, unlike Miss Mogilu, Madam Eleanor actually tries! Anyway, we need to find her and beat her. She'll just bring us more trouble the longer she's out there. Oh, we'll find her. No doubt about it. This looks like some kind of ruin. Where are we? 
Judging from the style of the walls and columns, I'd say this place is an ancient underground temple of Eumacia. Eumacia, the Empyrean of Earth. So it was by no coincidence that the Earth Pulse led us here. How did the temple builders know where to dig to connect to an Earth Pulse? Did they just get lucky? Just wham, there it is? An Earth Pulse doesn't work that way. It's a flow of natural force ordinary humans can't sense. But in those days, there were more humans capable of sensing that which others couldn't. It was people like that who guided the rest to build their temples closer to the Earth Pulses, closer to their gods. Uh-huh. So, since Empyreans control the forces of nature, people viewed the Earth Pulses as embodiments of the gods themselves. Is that it? Right. In the time when Empyrean worship was at its peak, temples like this were built all over. And I'm guessing they all looked pretty similar, so until we go outside, we're no closer to knowing where we are. That sums it up. Hmm. I wonder if they found any high-quality ore when they dug this hole. You know, for making swords. <sighs> I don't know why I bother explaining anything to you. You know, I'm starting to think you just enjoy it. <sighs> oh, I see what's going on here. They're using this as an excuse to do the, uh, the Act 1 transition, just like Zestiria did. You do the first chunk of story, and then you end up at a completely different location. And this is our this is our way to to basically teleport to a different region. Ah, you guys again? Well, look who set up shop here. You couldn't have shown up at a better time. We need more supplies. I'm happy to help you all, but this time I really, really needs to charge a little extra. How much extra are we talking here? Ooh, you haven't heard the stories, little turtles. Word has it, there's a spooky monster that's been eating traveling merchants around these parts. <laughs> eating merchants? She takes the shape of a black-haired girl, and when she finds greedy merchants, she gobbles them up head first. Although, if the greedy merchant was a turtle's, I bet she'd start with the crunchy shell. I'm not greedy, I swears it. Look, I had special sales going on. Everything's marked down to normal prices. How generous of you. Magulu, give the nice turtles the smile he lives for. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Much obliged. I almost feel bad. Almost. I don't, though. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I just thought about something. So if I am right about her joining the party, then Tales of Zestiria and Vesperia, no, Zestiria and Berseria both have a moment where you uh, finish your act one thing, you encounter the big bad boss that's probably the final boss of the game, but you're no match for them. You end up in a new location, a redhead joins the party and takes, and takes uh, control of one of your Malachim or Seraphim, and then you explore a series of new locations with her in your party as one of your new summoners. I'm like, huh. That's like the exact same steps being taken in the story, actually. It's almost as if they reuse ideas. <laughs> oh, whatever's over here is something I haven't seen yet, so we'll check it out. Oh, spooky skeletons, no. Stop it. Aha, I've escaped. That is almost weird. Wow, yeah, that's... That's a lot of... And, he, and it's even a redhead that you've encountered multiple times in the past. Admittedly, in, in this case... Yeah, they keep foreshadowing them over and over again by having you encounter them repeatedly, and then suddenly they join the party by taking the load of, uh... One of the, uh... One of the Seraphim in your party. The last time it was because you were trying to... You're trying to handle too many of them at once, and he was exhausting you. In this case, it's just that he went from not needing, uh, not needing an exorcist to control them to suddenly needing an exorcist to control them, because apparently they can just wander around on their own in this game, assuming Velvet herself is not somehow an exorcist or something. So the mechanics are a little different there, from what I remember. Also, last time our, our change in location was much less magical in nature. <laughs> this time we're teleported through an alternate uh, dimension or something like that, and coming out into another temple. Whereas in uh, in the other game, we uh, literally fell off a cliff. 
And like, oh well, we're not getting back up there for a while, so I guess this is our new world to explore. Uh, although that was also a temple. You fall off a cliff and then immediately go into an underground temple. So, still a few similarities to be had, I suppose. Interesting. And it was also shortly after you encountered a shadow organization. Ah! Although in that case, you're, the person who joined your party was a member of the shadow organization, whereas in this case, she has absolutely nothing to uh, do with the shadow organization. Ow. Ow. Holy crap. I'm not getting attacks off. Turns out spears give you a range advantage. Who would have guessed, right? Come here. All right, let's just make sure I have a combo that is actually all... Uh... Oh. No. Let's double check. Your type is called Fiend Winged. Fiend Winged. Let's try look for a martial arts that's one of those. There we go. Do I have anti fiend skills? Not yet. But I can go for paralysis and stun. That should help. If I can avoid hits enough to actually get the combo off. It's like poetry, it rhymes. Wow. 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 Destroying. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's the combo to use, apparently. <laughs> oh, that was disappointing. <laughs> that was- that was- that was a bummer. Hardly. These are deadly weapons. I am definitely getting it, it's like poetry it rhymes vibes from uh from this game right now. <laughs> it's enough to reuse locations, but they're also reusing entire plot points and and story mechanics, which is that's something. I guess that's what happens when you uh have a have a studio that's supposed to pump out another uh oh that's almost certainly a uh, a code red, right? It's glowing at least. Yeah, I suppose that's what happens when you have a studio that's expected to pump out another game in a franchise almost annually. Hey, buddy. You're probably a Code Red. Alright, your weaknesses are Fire and Wind. You're weak to Hidden Arts. You're resistant to Physical and Earth. Alright, Fire, Wind, Hidden. Let's try mapping something for B. There's, oh, that's Water. Oh yeah, it's all Water right now. Do I have a- I know I have a Fire skill. There's a wind. Fire. Aren't the... Are, okay. Probably want to lean heavier on fire because it's a, uh... It's a hidden art. Let's open with Searing Edge. And I'll, I'll put the... I'll put a wind in the second one for a stun, hopefully. See if that helps. But if I'm hitting with them with their weaknesses, I might want to try to replace the fourth one with a paralysis. If I can find a paralysis that's not their... Yeah, that's a martial arts. There's a poison. Which is a hidden art, at least. But he's, they're strong, she's strong against water, though, isn't she? How about type? No, she's not strong against water. Demi-human, crustacean, or dem... Uh, fiend... What was that poison one? Weak to uh, so wrong against crustaceans. So that that actually fits in well with the others. High cost combo though. Yeah. See how it goes. Uh, that's a, yep, that's a lot of guarding. There we go. Watch it. Oh. Well, they introduced that uh, party changing mechanic just in time for us to lose access to that for a while. Maybe it'll come back at the end of this dungeon, though. Maybe she'll be. Oh, she's probably the final boss of the dungeon. You probably get to the end of the dungeon and then you fight her and Lafayette. The question is whether or not she can control Lafayette or if Lafayette's just going to be passive.
Well, she's definitely taking damage. Oh, yeah. I think this is... Wow. The number of freeze frames in that combo. Uh-oh. Dodge. Yep. Oh. Ow. I mistakenly thought I was outside of the radius of that. Okay. Let's, uh... Life bottle someone. Ow. I'm not particularly concerned about the grade penalty for using items. So I think you just you usually you can just grind more grind more grain. Uh, if I remember correctly, grade is just something that you, that progresses linearly, and the, the like. So getting better grade just means you're getting grade faster, but you still accumulate it in a linear fashion, like experience. Ow. So anything you don't get via for your own performance, you at least get via uh, effort. Put up some fight. Okay. Slow. Hit points cannot be restored like usual. Hit point. Yeah. Most. There's the uh, there's the uh, the obvious change, which is that it does the slow part. But then all the other parts of a status effect are actually usually the same, which is can't use certain abilities. You lose access to. Uh, healing, and so on and so forth. Back down we go. I need to make keep track of where I've been going, so I went up there, I believe. Uh, the way to scroll the adjust height is right trigger. There we go. So I've been to both of these dead ends. Okay, so every- oh, everything past the turtles was actually side content then. Hit. Don't mind me. Oh, I can break that wall. Hi there. Didn't look directly at you yet. Hopefully I'm not missing any. Oh. Hey, a chest. Oh, and probably the exit, actually. In that case, what's over here? More Code Red Demons, please. That's generally more interesting to me. I like... I do like fighting big special bosses that... where you target their weakness and everything. It's at least something that's more to do than, uh... The alternative, which is basically usually to, uh, grind the same repeating mobs over and over again. This feels a bit more monumentous. And you fight it once and it's gone forever, presumably. So that's, yeah, we haven't been here yet. What's down here, game? Stat plant. Uh, nope. 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 <laughs> That got worse fast. This is probably a dead end with with a treasure chest in it. Got it. Nailed it. I know how your levels work. I've seen the pattern enough times now. Oh yeah, I can punch that wall. I'll grab it. Oh my goodness. Ah, 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 I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. You can't catch me. Okay, you'll catch- you might catch me. <laughs> oh, this is mostly working. That's really funny. Ah! That's really close. One more! Yes! You can't get me. You can't get me. Ooh, you hit something. That might be my favorite room ever. Hey, you. Come over here real quick. There we go. <laughs> I'm just barely getting away. Oh, that's weirdly satisfying. Uh, did I get the new things yet? Nope. Keep sending them there. I'm, I'm sending them to the level one one over and over again because they keep I, they keep not getting the whatever the, the rare drop is. I already have some of the other rare drops for the higher level ones. Oh, okay. The important thing is to not make super sharp turns because if you make a sharp turn, you you lose your momentum at, at getting away from them. We've grabbed everything now. Nothing is safe. And where was that breakable wall? I didn't go the wrong way, did I? Oh yeah, the left door over there leads me back to the breakable wall I found. Thank goodness for loading times. Could you imagine if there was a loading screen every time I went through one of these? 
I, I am 100% okay with sticking to this, uh, this more cartoony, uh, simple art style if it means the game always runs well and always loads instantly and so on. Because it also looks good. Like, I think it more or less hit peak levels as far as visuals go. It's like, well, the textures don't, the textures don't look compressed on their bodies and all the line work's generally sharp. Maybe there could be some better anti-aliasing or something a little bit. That might even be in settings if I haven't checked or something. And maybe some draw distance or larger uh, larger zones without transitions. But I feel like we've hit the point where maybe that's part of the engine. Or maybe even they... It feels like they might even do small zones, not because of the... Uh, how what the game can run, but instead just the size of the mini-map in the corner is better processed by having a smaller map, perhaps. It is noteworthy that they often have big maps that are big open planes, but small maps that are dungeon interiors, as if making the dungeon interior... Like, because the map is more complicated for a dungeon interior compared to a big open splotch of a field, it might be that they specifically choose to make those maps smaller so that they can uh, make it more na more visible on the mini-map. Because if it was... If it was too much map being put on one mini-map in the corner, then it would be really hard to process what you're actually looking at at some point. Oh my goodness, there's so many of these in this dungeon. I say that now, but the next cat's chest could just be 150, or 300. They can, they can escalate that to match. What is up with these bricks, by the way? <laughs> oh, yes, I'd like to make this wall as hard to build as possible. That's 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 just what that's what excites me, is walls that are incredibly complicated on a logistical level to build. So this seems to be a dead end with like loot in it. Yep, there's always a chest. But otherwise, it's just unsatisfying. Like when we were in Earth Pulse, it'd be hard to explain why a chest was there. I guess they could have just had a shiny thing on the floor you pick up. That was some sort of netherworldy thing. I imagine we'll be visiting Earth Pulse locations more in the future. They seem kind of important. Here we go. Alright, we're about ready to leave then.